So, as you saw in the photo just a second ago, there was a tumbler with the rock. That is what inspired this rock. So I've painted the rock white. I just used an apple barrel uh, matte white. And now I'm going with Phthalo Green by Liquitex. And I'm just going to cover my whole rock green. And you don't really have to worry about how, how this layer of paint looks. Uh, it can be splotchy or whatever you see. I'm going in all different directions, which is something I normally don't do. Um, but we're going to paint the top and the sides all green. So now I'm going to prep the rock for glitter. And I'm taking Mod Podge and I'm just mixing it with the existing paint that was on my palette. That's going to tint the Mod Podge green. You don't have to do this step. I just had the extra paint on there so I just thought I would go ahead and tint it. Now to start with I'm just going to Mod Podge one half of the rock. And that way I can get the glitter on there before the Mod Podge dries because it does dry rather quickly. But I'm going to put a piece of, you can do that glitter doesn't stick to. Um, you want to put that down on your surface to catch the glitter so that we don't waste a bunch of it. And I'm sorry, I'm off screen just this. Um, but I'm just going to paint, like I said, the one half of the rock. The top and the sides. Now I will have all of the supplies that I used on this rock. I will link them uh, in the description below. So now that I have my half of that rock painted with the Mod Podge while it's still wet, I'm taking a green glitter, and this is Cloverfield, um, and I can't remember the brand if it's, I think this is Glittering Grand, um, I believe. It might be a different company. I've started using Glittering Grand because they have much better glitter pricing. This might have been a different, um, oops, sorry, different company, um, but I will link it below. And I'm going to Mod Podge this the other side. You've got to be kind of careful how you hold the rock now that the glitter is still wet on that one half. And you don't want to paint the Mod Podge too heavily on top of existing glitter. Otherwise, but you can kind of pat that down if you do um, get kind of a ridge in the center overlapping that Mod Podge. You just want to be careful there. And you want to just get a good coat of glitter, making sure you don't have any bare spots. And if you do, I have some bare spots on this side, so I'm just tapping a little bit of Mod Podge on there, and we'll sprinkle some more glitter on it. My glitter, it comes in little bags. I, I like to put them in those little spice shakers. It just makes it so much easier to kind of control the glitter. So now I'm just tapping down any glitter that's kind of sticking up. To try to make the surface of the rock as smooth as possible. So now that my rock is completely glittered, I'm going to just take the glitter that's on my little wax paper here. And I'm going to dump it back into the bottle so we don't waste all of that glitter.
so now that I've cleaned up from the glitter, which is a little messy, and my Mod Podge has dried, I'm taking a UV resin, um, and I'm just going to put a little bit, you know, kind of a little circle of resin on top of the rock, and then I'm going to smear that around. And what I want to do is, is a thin coat of this UV resin all over the top, and the sides so we're going to seal in all of that glitter and this is when I say UV resin it doesn't cure over time you have to have a UV or LED like a nail lamp in order for this to cure and I will have the product I'm using linked down below but I want it I want a very thin coat but I want because you don't want it to drip. You just want to use this to seal in the glitter. So now I'm taking my UV lamp. And I'm going to cure it. Now my particular UV resin takes five minutes to cure but it takes 15 minutes to cure hard five minutes to cure to where you can kind of touch it but 15 to cure it so that it's not it doesn't have a, a bit of a sticky residue so I'm actually going to sit here and I'm holding it in there right now I do end up just setting it on top of a silicone mat and letting the timer just run so I actually did this for 15 minutes and here's the little silicone pad that I like to use I'll have the link uh, to that item also in the description um, but I it came as a large pad and I cut it up into these little little squares specifically for my rocks but they're kind of like pyramid shapes so it kind of holds it up off the ground so now that my rock is the uh, the resin is all cured and like I said I cured it for 15 minutes so it wouldn't be sticky anymore So now I am taking some vinyl uh, shamrocks that I cut out on my Cricut machine. And I can ha I'll have the cut list for that linked over on my uh, private Facebook group, Rockin' It with April May. Um, if you join that, you'll have access to all of uh, all of my traceable files, cut files, anything like that, um, I always have available over on my private Facebook group, which is also linked below. Where I want it. And then I'm just going to rub the vinyl down. Now the vinyl doesn't stay. So if you're going to, if you are going to do this process and you have the Cricut or a Silhouette or a cutting machine, um, use vinyl that you don't like. Like I have this kind of orange color. I don't use it very often and I have a bunch of it. So as to a vinyl like a black or a white, something that you would use more often. This is kind of just a throwaway. It's just to cover the glitter for our next step. So I have the one big shamrock in the middle and it says lucky across it and now I'm taking it's two different size uh, shamrocks here I have a slightly smaller one I'm going to place them randomly over the rock and you want to make sure that some of them go over the edge and you want some along the edge of the rock <clears throat> sorry and I'm also uh Placing them in random directions, too. Now, 
Now, if you don't have a Cricut machine and you can't do this step, skip it. And when we get to painting the rock, doing a coat, we're going to, the next step is to cover the glitter and paint this whole rock. I'll walk you through how to do this rock without using the vinyl. So now I've got all the vinyl stickers on there. I'm taking some iridescent mica powder and this one is a green iridescent. Sorry, my phone keeps going off. Um, I'm also taking this floating medium by Folk Art. And what floating medium is, it's basically the base of acrylic paint. So the pigment in it. And I'm putting that in just this little condiment cup. I put a little bit of the floating medium, just just a little bit. And then now if you're if you're not using the vinyl, you would make up a little bit more of this. And now I'm adding the mica powder to the floating medium. And then I'm going to thin that with water because I'm going to run this through my airbrush. But if you don't have an airbrush and you're not using the vinyl, you just go ahead and the really what I would do is just skip everything to the and I would just paint my whole rock the white mica. Better skip everything just paint the rock with this mica powder mixture with a paintbrush. And then I would draw on the shamrocks with, I would draw out the design, which I can, I'll go ahead and create. If you don't want to go through the whole glittering process and vinyl process, I'll draw up a traceable file so that you can draw on all of these shamrock glittered paint and paint your uh, paint the shamrocks on there. So I will provide that over on that traceable file over on my um, private Facebook group. Sorry, um, I had a brain cloud there for a second. So now what I'm doing is just airbrushing that mixture, that paint mixture I just made. I'm airbrushing that on. They call this a peekaboo effect because what we're going to do is once we paint this and we let it dry, we're going to peel up the vinyl stickers and so the glitter is going to show underneath the uh, underneath the painted areas where underneath the vinyl when we peel it up and they call that effect now my airbrush mixture was a little too watery and so I'm just wiping off the rock and gonna thicken up my airbrush paint just a little bit and start over So again, it's just a floating medium by Folk Art. And
And it doesn't take a whole lot of this mica powder. You see, it was just probably like an eighth of a teaspoon or less. And so what I would do if I was painting this rock, I would just brush that on straight. I'm adding the water just so that it'll go through my airbrush gun. going to take um, a weeding tool. This is just a pick that came with my Cricut machine. And I'm going to pull up the vinyl. Now my um, my uh, airbrush paint is still a little damp. And you can see I touched it and it came off a little bit. So I'm just going to take some of the mica powder and dab it over the area that I touched to cover it up. You don't want it to dry too much because you could peel the paint off when you peel off your uh, the vinyl. So you've got to kind of find that happy medium where the paint's still a little bit damp so that it doesn't just peel all of it off. So I'm just taking my um, this is a heat gun, an embossing heat gun, and just drying it just a little bit more. And you can see where I have the, I dabbed the mica powder on there. I'm going to brush that off in a minute. And the reason why I did it this way, as opposed to just painting the rock, rock with the mica powder paint mixture, and then painting on the shamrocks is that by by doing it this way, you add a lot of depth to the rock because the glitter looks like it's below the painted surface. So it kind of gives you these layers on the rock. But it is kind of a lengthy process. So if you just want to make it easy, paint the surface with the mica mixture and then paint on with glitter paint. So there I'm just covering up uh, where I had originally touched it, just fixing that little area. And then I'll work on that a little bit more. So now I'm just carefully peeling up the vinyl stickers. And you want to be careful that you don't pick at the sides too much because you will pick into the mica paint. And that's just a, that blue bulb thing is just a device that makes it easier to get the vinyl off of your weeding tool. And I'm switching to, this is just a straight weeding tool or picking tool. Um, I just have a little bit more control with this tool. The other one is the, the one with the hook is the one that came with my Cricut machine. This is an aftermarket that I got off of Amazon and I can link that in the description below as well. So we're just going to go ahead with the vinyl stickers at this point.
now that I have all of the vinyl stickers removed, I'm just taking, this is just titanium white. Um, I just happen to have it in a condiment cup. This was something that was left over from another project. So I'm just taking that and a very fine liner brush. And I am going to go over the word lucky because it doesn't show up very well. Uh, from the mica paint because I airbrushed it on so it's you know it's a very thin coat so I'm actually just going to go and trace over the letters with this this is just titanium white by Liquitex Basics and then once I get this all painted the word lucky then I'm going to outline each one of my shamrocks uh, with this same paint using the same brush. So I'm going to go ahead and just fast forward you through this section as well. shamrocks outlined in the white I'm going to take this Rust-Oleum triple thick glaze and I'm just going to do a clear coat over the whole rock and here is the finished product along with the tumbler um, a lot of my rocks are available over on Etsy so make sure to check out my shop and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video